Hello, my name is Ed Gilman, and I am an applications expert at Maginet Technologies. Today, I'll be taking you through the steps to take a nest created in the nesting utility um, and import it into Inventor um, and create a toolpath for your machine using Inventor HSM. So your first step in the nesting utility is once you've created your nesting study, you'll expand the nesting study in the model tree. Click on the sheet that you'd like to create a toolpath for and then right click. Here you'll be given the options on how you would like to export your study. One option is to use the export feature. This allows you to export the study as a DXF file. Another option, which I'll go over today, is by selecting Create 3D Model. This will send the nesting study to Inventor and create a solid model that you can create a toolpath for. So when you click Create 3D Model, this will bring your nest into Inventor and automatically create extrusions for each part as well as for the stock. You'll see here it's creating an extrusion for the stock. This is controlled by the packaging parameters and materials that you set in the nesting study. It also creates extrusions for all of the parts included in that boundary. And again, these are all controlled by the packaging and materials parameters in the nesting utility. Now that you're an inventor, by going to the CAM tab and then selecting Setup, you can begin to create your stock setup for your toolpath. So under the Operation Type, you'll go ahead and expand the drop-down. And if you're doing laser cutting, water jet, or plasma, you're going to want to select Cutting. The orientation shouldn't need to be adjusted. This should have been set up in the nesting utility. For the origin, you're going to want to select where you want your WCS point to be. In this case, I'll use a stock box point, and I'll locate my stock in the upper left front corner. The fixture box you can use to identify fixtures or clamps that are used to hold down your stock on your table. In this case, I'm not going to add any fixtures. The next tab, the stock tab, you can adjust the sizing of your stock. But again, this should all be set up in your nesting utility. And you'll see here for the dimensions, the 48 by 48 dimension is based on the packaging parameters I set already in the nesting utility. You can add additional stock here if you're doing a facing operation. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say no additional stock. From here, you can move into the next tab, which is where you'll enter your program name, program comment. So this is where you'd maybe say the type of operation you're doing or the assembly name. And then your machine WCS. So here, this is your G54, G55, um, whatever you're using for your offset in the machine. So in this case, I'm just going to select one as my using my first offset. At this point, I've entered all the settings for the setup that I need, and I'll go ahead and click OK um, to begin adding my toolpaths. In the CAM tab on the cutting panel, I'm going to select 2D profile. Uh, this is the HSM machining strategy for water jet, laser, and plasma cutters. So when I click 2D Profile, this will open up a new dialog box in the left panel. So first thing I'll do is select the actual type of cutting I'll be doing. So the default is water jet. If you expand the drop down, you can choose laser or plasma cutting. So today I'm going to be doing water jet. The cutting mode drop-down allows you to choose the quality of cut manually, um, or it will be automatically selected. You can also choose to etch 
if you um, are doing an etching operation. The kerf width, um, as you'll see here, is the width of the material um, that's removed in the process. So the width of basically your cutter, whether it be laser, water jet, or plasma. I'll leave that where it is, but you can manually adjust those. Down here is the feed setting. So if you need to um, override the default feed rates, you can do that here. So if you want to um, maybe run it faster during the actual cutting operation, you can adjust the feed rate here. The next tab over, the geometry tab, this is where I'll select what I will be cutting out. So as you can see, I can select the boundary of one of these parts and it'll automatically chain together that loop and it knows to cut out that entire profile. So I can go one by one and select each and every one of these profiles, the external as well as the internal. A quicker way to do it, which you may want to try, is if you check this box here for select same plane faces, then when you select any of these parts, it'll automatically select all of the other parts that are on the same plane. So you see, I click that face and now all of my loops are automatically selected. You can then specify further which loops you'd actually like to cut out in your toolpath by the loops dropdown. So here I can select all loops as it is there. If I select outer loops, it'll only do the outer boundaries of the parts and inner loops will only do the inner boundaries on those parts. You can also specify the side. And so this will determine which side uh, the cutter is going to offset from the profile. Another option in this tab is the tabs option. Tabs give you a way to hold the part when cutting profiles from a sheet. So when you add these, it'll add operations to create these small tabs around each part to hold it onto the sheet while cutting. The next tab is your clearances. If you zoom in, you can see I have my clearance height set at 0.4 inches above the part. My retract height for the cutter is at 0.2 inches above the top face of the part. And then the top height is set as the stock top. So I'll leave those as is, but those can be also adjusted based on your setup and your clearances. The next tab, the passes tab, here I can set tolerances for linearizing the geometry. This can be used to smooth out the motion of the actual machine head. I can also adjust sideways compensation, compensation type, stock to leave, and smoothing. These aren't commonly used, but you can adjust how much stock you'd like to leave around the edges of the part that you're cutting. Um, for finishing operations, um, as well as further smoothing to the toolpath. The next tab over, the linking tab. Here you can choose to keep the nozzle down. So this can be used to avoid retract moves and speed up your operation, um, but you do risk um, damaging the head of your machine um, while cutting. So this should only be used in specific circumstances. Lead in and lead out. Uh, these allow you to adjust um, the radius um, and distance for the lead in and lead out operations. This basically keeps um, your cutter away from the part where it enters so you don't damage um, or leave a mark um, on the parts where you start each cut. Uh, it gives you a little bit of space from the, from the part. Same with piercing clearance. This is extra clearances from the part um, for where it's going to be entering the sheet, and those can be used um, together. So once I have all my settings here in my 2D profile set up, I'll click OK, and it'll automatically begin generating this toolpath. When the percentage is gone and you select it, you'll now be able to see the toolpath and its yellow boundary of where it's going to be running throughout the part. Now that I've created my 2D profile 
operation, I can simulate it and see what the cutter is going to look like moving across the part, uh, as well as double check clearances um, to the machine and all the fixturing. To simulate, I'll click on Setup in the model tree, right click, and then select Simulate All. You'll now see the cutter head and holder have been placed over the part, and when I select the play button, it'll begin simulating the path of the cutter during the 2D profile operation. If I'd like to see the stock and get a representation of what it will look like while it's being cut, I can select the stock checkbox and then use the drop downs to adjust the visualization as well as color of the stock. Under colorization, I'll choose use material. And then from the material drop down, I can select any material in the database and it'll match that color. So if I use steel, it'll be a steel colored stock. I can also adjust the transparency of the stock using the show transparent checkbox. I can also adjust the transparency of the tool with the show transparent checkbox under that menu. While simulating, you can adjust the speed of the simulation with the slider beneath the play button. By moving it to the left, it'll slow down the movement of the cutter. Moving it to the right will speed up the movement of the cutter. You'll also notice in the left hand side, if you select the info tab, it'll show you the X and Y position as well as Z position of the cutter throughout the toolpath in real time. The feed rate, spindle speed, which in this case is undefined for a laser water or plasma cutter. It'll also show you the work offset you're using. And then when you go to the statistics tab, you can get even further information about it, including the machining time estimate for how long it'll take to cut this part number of operations, and number of tool changes. These can be really useful when you're scheduling out um, each operation and how long you want it to take on the floor. When I'm satisfied with my simulation, I'll go ahead and click Close, and then I'm ready to post-process my toolpath. Now that I've simulated my 2D profile toolpath, I'm ready to post-process my toolpath for my machine. To post-process, I'll select Post process in the toolpath panel located under the CAM tab. This will bring up a dialog box. First thing you'll see is the configuration folder. This is the default folder where Inventor will store post processors on your machine. The next section is post configuration. Here I can select the post processor I would like to use for my machine controller. If I don't see the post processor that I'd like to use, you can search for post processors by going to cam.autodesk.com forward slash HSM posts. At this website, there are many different post processors that aren't necessarily um, included in the standard HSM package that you install. If you go to the filter by type drop down and you select water jet laser plasma, this will filter the post processors for ones that are intended for use in water jet laser or plasma applications. Scrolling through the list, this is where I got the OMAX post processor by navigating to it and selecting download. This will download it to a default location on my machine. If I copy that and move it into the standard configuration folder, which you'll see here, that CPS file will then show up as an option in my post configuration dropdown. You'll also want to set your output folder. Again, this is a default location set up during installation. I can adjust my output folder by clicking the ellipses and navigating to the folder on my machine where I'd like my posts to be saved to. Under program settings, 
here again, I'll enter my program name or number as well as program comment. This is what will be displayed on your machine control panel when you're running the toolpath. So you'll want to make sure that that matches um, however you have your nesting uh, operation named. You can also adjust individual properties and values um, that affect the post processor here. For this application, I'm not going to change any of these. I'll leave them as the default. When you're ready to post process your toolpath, go ahead and select post. It'll go to the default output folder where you'll enter your file name and select save. The post process G code will automatically be opened in Autodesk HSM edit. In here, you can modify individual lines of code manually. Um, you can also add lines of code. Once you're satisfied with your G code, um, you can go ahead and save this file um, and run it on your machine.